Hey guys, since I'm on a roll telling you my opinion, I'm going to go ahead and address something that I tried to avoid because it causes division. Uh, is the Calvin's tulip teaching that I think really disrespects and maligns the character and nature of God. Uh, one of the things is the unconditional election. That God randomly chooses people who will be saved and who will be lost. Some are predestined to hell. They never have a chance of being saved. I do not believe that. I believe there's a verse that explains how this works. Uh, we don't just take one verse and put our foundation of doctrine on it. We have to look at the full counsel of God. So let me read these verses and I'll tell you what I mean. This is my opinion. I believe, let me tell you what I believe up front. I believe God knows the end from the beginning. He knows the future. He knows that we have free will. I believe that. I believe we have free will to choose. And God knows that choice before we even make it. And I'll show you some verses on how he knows the future. Now, based on that free will choice, he determines who he will predestinate to serve his purposes. And I think that's what he means when he says, Jacob I've loved, Esau I hated. All right? that I don't believe that's necessarily the individuals, but the nations they would become. Jacob is Israel. Esau is Edom. The Edomites were terrible pagan Canaanites. Okay, they worshipped false gods. God knew who would worship the true God and who would worship false gods. So I believe that, and I will show you why I believe that. All right, that's my opinion. I do not believe God creates some with no chance. I think over and over again and that he gives them chance after chance. He knows what they're going to choose. He knows their hearts. And it tells us in scripture, we don't know how many chances God could have given that person. How dare we judge God and say he's unrighteous? Like, why is the, why is the potter made the clay like this? Like, it's his fault. But we don't know how many chances God gave them. All right? So, uh, I think we need to consider all of that, not just one section of scripture, but the whole thing, all right? So, let me read this in Romans 9. Now, this is where the Calvinists really get it. See, I think John Calvin was a wicked dude, an evil man. who He was horrible. If you read about this dictator, you'll see what I mean. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to the election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Okay, so it appears that God chooses people to be lost or saved. No, I believe he chooses, based on knowing the future, chooses certain people to be predestined for certain feats, for certain things that they should do for him, for certain service, right? Just like I believe Judas was chosen to betray Jesus. It tells us that. God knew his heart. He knew the future. Judas was chosen. He said it was chosen so that the scripture might be fulfilled that Jesus would be betrayed. So that's what I believe. My opinion. You believe what you want, and I will show you why I believe that. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob I've loved, but Esau I've hated. Now, again, that's nations. Esau became Edom. Jacob became Israel. So God loved Israel. They worshiped him. The Edomites worshiped false gods. They sacrificed their children to demons, to devils. We know that. All right. So he said from the beginning, Jacob I loved, Esau I hated. He knew the future. That's what I believe. And based on that, God predestinates certain people for certain feats to be accomplished for his purpose. That's what I believe. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I'll have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I'll have compassion. Okay, I don't think this is random. I think it's based on God's foreknowledge. I'll give you scripture proving that. This is why I believe it. So it's not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God who showeth mercy. 
Okay, it's not based on man's will or what he's doing or him being deserving of it or not. All right, but of God, of who he wants to show mercy to. Again, based on him knowing the future. And I can show you that. All right. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So, why did he allow Pharaoh to rise and persecute the people? He warned about your people would be there for 400 years, and then they would be delivered. Okay? This was all known by God before it occurred. And so he used the hard heartness of Pharaoh so that he could what show his power over their gods part of it was judgment upon the gods of egypt these devils that they worshiped through their idols they were legitimate they had power we saw janice and jambres the two magicians where paul tells us their names later uh withholding moses with standing against moses with doing uh, the same uh miracle that he did with the staff becoming a serpent they did the same thing except the serpent of God ate the two serpents they created. But up until a certain point, they could mimic the miracles of God, right? So that was why he foreknew, he put him in that place, he allowed him to rise up so his power would be magnified and he would be worshipped. His power as the God of all gods would be proven, all right? So I, I believe there was never a chance Pharaoh would have ever turned to God. Ever. God knew it, and finally it says even God hardened his heart. I think he foreknew that. All right. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, right? So then it says, therefore he hath mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. I still think it's based on God foreseeing and knowing the person's choices and character. I really do. What will say then unto me? Why doth he yet find fault? Who has resisted his will? Again, I think God is just. He's just. He can't do anything unjust. All right? Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Has not the potter had power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor? And another under dishonor. Now, this is what the Calvinists stand on. See, he makes some for salvation and some to be unsaved. I don't believe that. I believe he offers it. Jesus said, I will draw all men unto me. He said that he loved the world, not just the elect. All right? And I believe God did that for the world. And he does draw all men unto him. But some refuse because of the hardness of their hearts. And God knows the end from the beginning. And based on his foreknowledge, we are predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. All right? So, anyway. And he said, it's not the power over the potter over the clay of the same lump to make a vessel unto honor and another to dishonor. Well, but now here's the key. What if God, willing to show his wrath and make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Okay? We don't know how many times God patiently allowed those people chance after chance after chance to repent, to turn to him. That's what he's saying here. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering or patience the vessels of wrath fit to destruction? That's the part they miss. They, we don't know how many chances God gave these people before using them for his purpose as a vessel of dishonor. All right, here we go. That he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. So what are we t predestined unto? Those that chose him that he knew the future of, that he knew would choose, he has predestined those to glory. All right? Even us whom he's called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. I believe God knew our hearts. He knew the end from the beginning. And I will show you why. It tells you why some are elect. 
All right. First Peter, elect according to the fore knowledge of God the Father. There you go. How are we elect? Because of the foreknowledge of God the Father. Now they believe he's saying, well, he foreknew us because he chose us and therefore knew us before. No, 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 no. Elect according to the foreknowledge. God knew the future. He knows who the elect are and therefore we have been predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. He knew our free will choice. I believe that. I believe that. I think it is a mixture of God's sovereignty and man's free will. I do not believe we are robots, that God moves around like pawns. There's too much evil going on in the world in this fallen place, and I do not believe that God does that. I believe that God uses it and will use all things that for the good of those who love him, but he doesn't always stop it. All right, and he doesn't always cause it. Now, why would we need to pray for the Father's will to be done if it's always done on earth as it is in heaven? It is not. The little G God of this world still has authority over many of the people here on earth. And we're supposed to be a light unto that darkness. All right? There would be no need to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven if it's always done on earth. All right? So, I do not believe that. So, 1 Peter says, 1 Peter 1, 2, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Okay? So, we're made holy by the Holy Spirit. All right, now also, now, now that we know that we're elect according to the foreknowledge of God, God foreknew the future, all right? And I'll give you more verses proving that. Then in Romans 8, 29, it says, For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed in the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. I do not believe Calvinism thing, that only certain people are going to be saved because God chose them to be saved. I believe that he died for all people. He knew the future. And those people that he did foreknow, that he knew would be his, he predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first firstborn among many brethren. All right? So, I do not uh, believe that. Remember, it says, many are called, few are chosen. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, whom he called, them he also justified, whom he justified, them he also glorified. If God be for us, who could be against us? That gives us our security, man. God foreknew. He is gonna, he's the author and finisher of our faith. He knew we'd be his. And he says that once you're mine, you are going, you are predestined to be justified. That means declared righteous, sanctified, made holy, and glorified. We'll be giving a glorified body. So, uh, it tells us, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. It tells you right there how we're elect. Okay, not because any, meeny, miny, mo, And we're told in Romans, they don't read that part. What if God, with all patience, tolerated these people being rebellious to him, gave them chance after chance after chance? All right? All right, so, Psalm 139.4. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. For me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. He's saying you knew what I would say before I said it. All right? There we go. That's He knows the future. Isaiah 46.10. This is a very clear one. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. I believe God knows all things. He knows who will by their free will choose him. 
And he takes those people and uses them for vessels of honor. And those that refuse him after much long suffering and patience and chance after chance takes those vessels of dishonor and also uses them for his purpose as he used the vessel of dishonor of dishonor Pharaoh for his purposes to be glorified and to put judgment upon the little g gods of Egypt. So I do not believe that God any meaning. Oh, you're going to hell. You're going to, this one's going to be born for hell. It's going to be born. For, no, 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 no. He is not unjust. Elect according to the foreknowledge of the father and those he foreknew. He also uh, predestinated, justified, glorified. Okay. So it's not of him that willeth or of him that runneth. See, God's will is that all be saved. But is God's will always done? No. If it was, why would we have to pray? Your will be done as on earth as it is in heaven. It's not his will that any should perish. But do they? Yes, they do. Why? If God is all sovereign, it is not his will any perish. Why do they perish? Free will. I do not believe that we don't have free will. Otherwise, God's will would always be done. But I tell you what is done, the overall plan of God. Nobody will get in the way of the big stuff. You know, we have free will over the small things in our lives. God knows the future before it happens. He uses those people. He places them in the situations. And he does it for his glory. It's something we can't understand outside of time space. So we can't just simplify it like he just randomly chase, chooses people. This one's for dishonor. This one's for... No. It tells us, what if God, with all long suffering, do you see? So we're not here to judge God, but I also know his character. It's not his will that any should perish. That he loves the world, not just special people. And I believe he gave us chance after chance. And if people continue to read Romans 9, they'd see that. That with long suffering, he gave a lot of people chances and he also knew who would never turn to him. Jacob I loved, he saw I hated. They're nations. They're not just people. Israel and, the, and Edom. Edom were pagans. They didn't turn to him. And he knew that. He knew Jacob would become Israel, his chosen people. That's why it's Jacob I loved. Israel I loved, Edom I hated, is basically what he's saying. So we, we, we have to understand these things. Uh, he's not saying, I hate Esau as a person. That's not what he was saying. He knew. He knew the future. You know, he knew that nation would become great pagan nations that would come against him and be a thorn in the side of Israel. All right? So Israel I loved. Edom I hated. Jacob I loved. Esau I hated. Can you see that? So anyway, that's my opinion. And it is based on scripture. And I think it makes a lot more sense about who God's character, what God's character is, and the love he has for human beings, rather than any, many, money mo, you're going to hell, you're not. La na 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 boo boo, you don't get to heaven because I didn't pick you. I don't believe that. I do not believe that. It's not willing any should perish. All right, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate on this one, but I am anti God's sovereignty being so, so I, I don't believe that. I believe he gives all of us a choice because he's not willing any should perish. All right. All right. God bless.